Hey everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to try to uh, create a typical marvelous designer rug. Now what does it mean? Well what I actually mean when I say a typical marvelous designer rug is something like this. I've seen a lot of these types of rugs on a lot of CG scenes. For me it's a clean uh, giveaway that this is actually a CGI scene but in some cases it can look nice or it can even look cool especially if you have a room that's a bit unruly so this is actually a fairly straightforward uh, thing to do but for some reason a lot of people don't know how to do it so let's go ahead and I can show you how to do something like this and then even add a bit of a flair to it so, like all things in Marvelous Designer, we have, or we need to have a pattern on which we're going to work. So, let's simply go ahead and take a rectangle. You can either use a circle if you want to, if you want to have a circular rug. So, that's all up to you. So, let's go ahead and make this 2,000 millimeters by 1,000, which is you know, more or less going to make it 2 by 1 meters. So, here we go. I'm gonna sweep it up like this and then simply want to uh, let it simulate and drop to the ground as you uh, if you've ever used a marvelous designer you're pretty well aware that now as soon as this plane has uh, landed you can pull it or move it around and you're gonna start getting these uh, folds and this is actually in a lot of cases it can give you a cool look even for uh, for a rug or some kind of a towel or something like that so like this you can just simply use this as it is right now and export it out and use it in max or whatever program you want but in all honesty like I said this is a very very plain uh, material or a very plain model so let's see how we can uh, give it a bit more uh, the look that we're going for so with these ridges now these ridges are basically the place where the fabric has been sewn together so what we need to do for that is quite simple you simply go over to the internal uh, polygon line and from there you simply add in the lines that where you want to have that thing so you uh, you click you hold on shift that way you're moving it in a straight line until you get to the end and then you double click that is going to finish the, the line then do it again double click double click and do a double click this way the way I'm doing it I'm doing it by a uh, freehand so all of these lines are not uniformly spaced out if I want to have them uniformly spaced out what I can do is I can select one of my edges right click go on split and now I can either uh, go with the uniform split or I can split them by length or even in lines but for now I'm gonna st uh, stick to it like this so right away you can see that now we have those lines on our carpet but if I simulate you're gonna notice that nothing is changing the reason for this is we haven't set up any of the properties of those lines so holding down shift I'm going to select all of these lines and on the side I'm going to change the fold angle from 180 to 360 which is a full circle and increase the fold strength let's try with 60 you can try whatever uh, works for you you can experiment a bit and now once you start the simulation you get that like I uh, said in the start that marvelous designer look for a rug which can be seen here in case you want to have uh, well you don't want to have uh, these ridges over here looking like this all you have to do is change the particle distance and from 20 to 10 this is going to increase the number of polygons we have in our 
uh, simulation, which in turn is going to give us a much more detailed rug, like you can see it over here. Now here's another thing, uh, before we finish, I want to show you guys how you can add a texture to it and then add a logical uh, intersection to that texture. In order to create uh, that texture, I'm going to delete my um, already existing rug and I'm going to make a new one. So again, let's make it 2000 by 1000, click OK and I'm gonna flip it around and let it simulate on the ground there we go all right awesome so uh, what I want to do here is I want to add a texture something like this uh, the idea behind this is that I want to use the texture from this image but at these fold lines I want to I want to add that intersection which is going to give us a bit of a more interesting final uh, look to our model so let's see how we can do that so first of all I'm going to select my pattern on this side and then in order to be able to add any kind of texture I need to get over here where it says default fabric select the default fabric and on the side, you can see that now I'm uh, you're looking at the uh, property editor. If I want to add a texture, I need to press this button over here. And this is going to allow me to uh, take whatever texture I want to apply to my uh, model. So I'm going to go from here, take my uh, texture that I just downloaded, go open. And right away, you're going to see it appear on our model as well as our pattern. Now, the thing that you're going to notice is that this texture has been tiled quite a bit. So what we want to do in order to fix this is go over here where it says transform to the texture or press the T button. And now when you click on it, you're going to notice this uh, circle going around it. And these um, buttons or these vertices, which you can click and drag around so what these vertices do is they're basically giving you the ability to move around the texture so if i click here and drag you're going to notice that uh, my texture is scaling up if i click on it and rotate i'm actually rotating the texture if i click here i'm uh, scaling it on just one axis move it in the middle and then i can scale it over here like this until I get it to a position that I feel comfortable working with. Uh, I don't want to use this, so let's go ahead, move it outwards, just a tiny bit more. And yes, I think this is ideal. All right, so once we have this, now what I want to do here is I'm going to give it a bit of a tug. So I actually have some deforming in my texture or my model for that matter. Come on, move. All right, let's move it out backwards. Move it this way, because I still want to get that rough look. Like I said, uh, having the marvelous designer look to a rug can be a, well, it can be a dead giveaway, but in some cases it can really supplement your room or your design quite well, especially if you, you're supposed to have an unruly scene. All right, something like this. Now, if you leave it on like this, it can look good. I'm not saying uh, it cannot look good, but the thing is that it's simply lacking a bit of diversity. Now we can add that diversity by just adding those extra lines like I just showed you previously. So all we have to do is go in, hold down shift, trace out where those uh, midpoints are going to be or where the white is going to meet the blue. Click and drag. You don't have to be 100% uh, correct. You just get it close there we go. And again, 
it's a bit of a repetitive job, but hey, if it works, you should do it. Eh, all right. And just these two more. All right, awesome. All right, since we have all of those, all we have to do here is select all of these. We just create it, so the inner shapes. Oops, there we go. All right, we have all the inner shapes. Increase the fold angle, increase the fold strength, re-simulate, and you get these nice looking ridges on the sides. Now the thing is, like I showed uh, in the previous videos, uh, all of these are made out of triangles. In case you want to have them uh, as quads, all you have to do is go 3D garment and quadrangulate. If I'm not mistaken, I think this was implemented in Marvel Designer 4.5, I think. So in case you're working with an older version, you might not have this option. All right. We're going to wait for a second. It's going to do the calculations and it's going to give us a quoted result. There we go. So now it's all quads. If we need more geometry, again, we can go over, decrease the particle distance. And now, as soon as the simulation thing is done, there we go. I can uh, start the simulation. It's going to take a few seconds to think about all the changes that were done. And now we're going to be left with a much more detailed rug, which is seen here. So now that we have added a texture inside Marvel Designer, we want to take our garment and go and export it out as an OBJ. Uh, give it a name, so let's call it a carpet. And this is the important thing. You want to make sure that you're exporting it as a single object. Uh, you can either you, uh, choose to unify the UV coordinates, but in this case I'm not going to unify it because I want to combine my diffuse color with the texture. So if you put it like this, it's going to take the texture you have and put it in the diffuse slot once you import it into 3ds Max. So in case you're actually exporting this for a client or somebody else to use, you might want to save it with the texture files with a, uh, within a zip file. So because I'm not doing that, I don't have this selected. I only have diffuse color combined with texture and everything else is as default. So I'm going to click OK. And this is going to export my object, which I can later on use in 3ds Max. So if you guys enjoy watching this video, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button as it really does help a lot. And that would be it for this uh, video. I hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new. So take care and I will see you all in the next video.